we see a lot of disasters lately. I mean, been around seeing a lot of disasters. Uh, you know, you can look over in uh, Colorado Way, and they got ha houses, uh, about 30 of them, I think, in the neighborhood, just all burned up. And you got uh, wildfires, you got tornadoes, you got hurricanes. Uh, we didn't have a hurricane, but boy, we had a bad storm just last week, and uh, I got two more trees down in my backyard. Uh, praise God, didn't hit nothing this time, took the fence. And, uh, but we've had a lot of disasters around, so I'm telling you, uh, God still loves us through all that, amen? And I love to hear somebody say, thank God that we're still alive. You know, a lot of people don't thank realize God that we're that, still uh, alive. They say, well, I've heard people say, well, I'm, I'm lucky. Didn't get me, I'm lucky. You know, I tell people, you ain't luck. That's it's right. by the grace of God that you're here and here, amen? amen? Praise God. So let's pray, if you will. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, we thank you once again for letting us come back in the house of God. It is our privilege, Lord, to serve you and to love you. And Lord God, to give you praise, Lord, whenever we can. Now, Father, teach our hearts to praise you, Father. Teach our hearts to love you. Teach our hearts to love one another. Teach us to walk in the love of God. And teach us, Lord God, to lift up Jesus everywhere we go. Now, Lord, let the Holy Spirit have liberty in the house of God today. May he have liberty to bless us all and to teach us all the word of God. Now, Father, we, as I sit down, let Jesus stand up and the Holy Spirit preach this message today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like for you to go to Luke chapter 18. When you get there, somebody say amen. amen. Look like I always cut myself short. I go too far. I have the hardest time to come. Find the word, but I know where it's at. Amen. Amen. Uh, but God is good. It talks about here about uh, just give me an idea about the unjust judge, and um, I thank God, praise the Lord, that um, we have a just judge with Jesus Christ, and I have someone I can go to when I need someone to listen to me, understands what I go through, and uh, he's uh, was uh, he knows he suffered, uh, he knows what we've been through, he knows what we're going through. And he knows everything. Amen. Uh, so it says, And he spake a parable unto them uh, to this end, that men ought always to pray, not faint. I think we talked about that many times, how, uh, you know, this the house of prayer, God's house, uh, you know, pray as often as we can. I believe the more you talk to God in prayer, the more you're going to know God, and the more God's going to know you. Amen. Uh, it says here, There was a certain city, or was it a city, a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Got a lot of those people around today. And there was a widow in that city, and the, uh, she came into him and said, Avenge, avenge of me of mine adversaries. And uh, he would not for a while. Afterwards he said within himself, Though I have not fear God, nor regard for man or man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, at least by her continual coming she wearies me. Now, and the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Now, I like to say, praise God, as we, as we study this, we talk about prayer, and we talk about how often sometimes we go to the Lord and we stop praying, and how close we are to a breakthrough, or how close we are to getting that prayer answered, and sometimes we go, go far enough, we stop in the middle, or, or we think, Oh, God doesn't want us to have this or that, or doesn't care about us. But sometimes we're so close to a breakthrough through our prayer life, and then we quit. But God is saying here, don't give up. Don't ever give up on me. I never gave up on you. I believe there's something good. Remember, God believes more better in you than you probably believe in yourself. God has a plan and purpose for your life. Therefore, praise God, when you come to Jesus, it wasn't no accident. God already knows from the beginning to the end whether or not you was going to come to him. Amen? And God wants to make some plan for you while you were yet in your mother's womb. Jesus already knew you. God already knew you what. So God knows before you know the decisions that you'll probably make along the way. And God knows who to sit in your way in your life to give you, make you change your mind if he can in certain areas of your life. And then there's a deeper growth with God. God may send you somebody in your life to help you grow in a greater love towards him. Amen? So God knows who you need what you need. So sometimes I think that we get upset when things don't go our way, things, when things don't look like they're working out for our good or our behalf, we might get a little bit upset. And I think, praise God, it's good 
to just praise God no matter what. I, have, I tell you, praise God, I have been through some things and I've done some things and, 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 and I know that praising God works better than anything that I can say. When I can praise God to, just because I didn't get my prayer answered the way I thought I'd get it answered or, or if I didn't get what I thought I ought to get, or what, I still praise God because you know what? It doesn't matter. All those things are material things and those material things will come and go. They, will, they won't last, praise God. They'll be used up or, or they'll go and fade away. But the Word of God will never die. The Word of God will not come back void. What God's Word said, proclaim, He will do it, praise God. If God says you can trust in me, and God says if you can believe in me, if God says you'll delight in me, then I'll give you the desires of your heart. Isn't it awesome, praise God? All you have to do is believe and walk and believe. And sometimes we get doubts, and it's, it's normal to get doubts. It's normal sometimes say, God, I don't know, Lord, I've been waiting. I've been waiting and, and nothing's happened. And God said, well, it's okay. You know, you can have death, but, I, but you got to believe me and trust me along that walk that you're walking. Because sometimes you can slip and fall back real easy. And God said, hang on to me. You've been knowing me for a long time, and you know that I've never let you down. So it says here, praise God, because of the judge, and uh, he didn't fear man or God or, or even the woman, but you know what? He was kind of getting tired of her coming to him and complaining about the situation. Well, don't you think God's the same way? God is saying, you know, I'm going to answer your prayer because you continually believe in that I'll answer it. You continue to believe that I'm going to do something because you keep asking me. And I'm going to do it because you lo I love you. And I'm doing it because you're persistent and you didn't give up, praise God. Remember the man at midnight when he came to the man and wanted bread? He said, oh, just open the door. I've got friends in. I've got family in. I need some bread to put before them to feed them. And the man said, no, no, I'm asleep. My kids are asleep. My wife's asleep. And then all of a sudden he says, you know, he didn't get up because he loved the man. He didn't get up because he cared about it. He got up to get rid of him. He said he could continue worrying me. He's going to keep on knocking until I get up. But suppose, right before he got his answer, he quit knocking. Don't ever give up. Don't ever stop believing God. Don't ever look back. Don't ever go back. Don't jump back. Step back. Just keep on going. And don't listen to what your wife says or your husband says or your family says. You know what you believe. You know what God's able to do. You know how big God is. Yes. You know God never lets you down. You quit listening to all those negative things. And you keep going on. You keep knocking. And somebody's going to open your door. Yeah. Amen. So it says here, I think we ought to learn to walk as we're doing this, praise God. And we ought to start loving more in that walk that we're walking. Uh, you know that song brother sings sometimes, uh, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. Well, you know, the more I want, the more I know the Lord, the more I want to hold that nail scarred hand. The more I walk with God, the more I want to hold his nail scarred hand. And the more I hold his hand, the more I learn about his love. Because he loved us so much. While he was hanging on the cross, while he was up there bleeding, well, he, they were up here mocking him and, and, and doing all these things and piercing him with a spear in his side. And it's just, I at it, you think it's hot now? Hang on a cross in that heat. Amen? You know what I'm talking about? Hang on that cross in the heat out there. There's 105 in my house yesterday. Not hanging on a cross, just outside. I'm just saying he hung on a cross and he died. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I mean, what kind of love did our Father have in Jesus Christ to show that love that even though we tormented Him, not ourselves, but our, our forefathers, they tormented Him and made Him bleed and die for us, and yet He says, Father, forgive them. He said, I could call legions of angels. But no, this is why I came, to show you my love, to show you that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish and have everlasting life. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that nice to know that I serve a God that cares about me? Even though I've missed it, sometimes I've missed the mark, sometimes I've missed it completely, and God says, I still love you. Amen. That's enough to help me go on to the next level. That's enough to help me go up a little other step. Because I know every time I go up to another level, there's another devil waiting on me. Amen. I want you to go to Luke um, chapter 12. You're already near it. Let's go back up a little bit to Luke chapter 12. And I want 
you, if you will, Luke chapter 12, verse 40. It says here, Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. You know, we talked about it earlier, I mentioned it before, I have no promise of tomorrow. The day might be a rapture crowd. And then again, we might all go by one by one. But as that song says, we're a winner either way. If we're ready, now I know when I close my eyes over here, that when I open them back up, they're going to be over there. Amen? So, isn't that a love that God has for us? You know, I, I mean, I mean I got any perfect people here today? Good. You're in the right church. Because if you think you're perfect, then you are in the wrong church. <laughs> because we're not perfect, but our Father in Heaven is. And therefore, His perfect judgment his perfect delight, his perfect everything, he knows all about us. He knows your downs, he knows your ups, he knows when you're bad, he knows when you're good, he knows everything about you, he knows when you're crying, he collects every one of those tears and puts them in his hand, he knows everything you're going through, and therefore he can comfort you in your time that you need him most. But you know what? Without a relationship with him, that won't do much good with you. You've got to know him in order for him to know you. You've got to know Him and love Him in order for Him to know and love you. But He loves you regardless whether you love Him or not. There's a lot of people in hell today that really love God. True. That's the truth. There's a lot of people today that say, I love the Lord. But they're not here today. And they may not be here tomorrow. But the thing is, praise God, that not stop Him loving you either. He said, I'll love you all the way to hell. I'll love you. David said, if I make my bed in hell, he'll be there. If I make my bed up there, he'll be there. Wherever I am, there he is. I can't hide from God. You can run, but you cannot hide. So God is saying, I love you, and I care about you, and I want you to know you've got to stay ready because you don't know when I'm coming back. Everybody lives like they got all the time in the world, and God is saying, please, You've got to understand, you don't know the day or the hour that I'm coming back for you. So therefore, be ready. God wants a relationship with you, a prayer life. You know life is like a quicksand. If you're not standing on the solid rock of Jesus, everything else is just quicksand in this world. And if you don't have, if you don't have Jesus, then you're going to sink. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you will sink. And you've got to keep Him in, uh, active in your life. I'm telling you, praise God, if you'd had a car, you can have the most beautiful car in the world, but if you don't put gas in it, it ain't going nowhere. If you got Jesus, you can go everywhere you want to go. If you don't have Jesus, you might as well stay where you are because you ain't getting up. You ain't leaving this world without Jesus. He is actually the, the helium, whatever, that makes you float off this earth. He's the way, the truth, the life, and no man can come to the Father except by Him. God wants a relationship. God wants you to know. Let's go to Luke chapter 9. I'm kind of keep it close together here today. Luke chapter 9, and I want to go through verse 23. Go back to 22. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected are the elders uh, of the elders of the chief priests and the scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, all, every single one of them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself weakly and take up my cross and follow me. Is that what he said? Daily. Daily. Oh, daily. I mean, you could almost say hourly. You could almost say minutely. Amen. You could say every second of your life you ought to be following after Jesus. You know, just because the day's the Lord's day, just because the day is Sunday, doesn't mean that I have to wait till Sunday gets here before I can praise and worship right. God. Amen. 
It doesn't mean that I can live like I want to uh, 24 7 uh, when I feel like it and just come to church and like Mr. Goody 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 Two Shoes. It's a, it's a walk with God every day of your life. I, you don't, I don't have to have my wife with me when I praise God. I don't have to have my family with me when I worship God. I can do it by myself or with or with somebody. I can have learned to praise God every day of my life. Amen. And when you have the relationship with God, let me tell you something. He's got a relationship with you. Christian people, religious people, hang around the cross. Christian people hang on the cross. Hallelujah. And I know when he was on the mind, who do you think he had on his mind when he was on your mind, of course, apparently. But he says here, praise God, take up your cross daily. Uh, deny yourself daily. Come after me daily. Take up your cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what if a man advantage to him, or if he gained the whole world and lose himself will be cast away? What good will all the riches of the world do you? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes, shall come in his own glory and in his Father and the holy angels. I tell you the truth, there be some standing here today, is what he's saying, which shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? You know, I think about here uh, how God would love for us to become a purpose for Him. You know, I think maybe when I got saved, I should have a purpose for God. When I got saved, I should ask God, what would you want me to do for you, God? What can I do to make this world a better place for my family and friends? Lord, what can I do to be a purpose in my heart for you, God, that you'd ask me to do? Lord, what is it? Uh, do I go to the fishing bank and, like Peter said, let's go fishing and cast my fish and just go fishing? No, God saved you for a purpose. Let me give you some purpose. A, the, the, the fields are white already. God said, let's pray for the laborers. God sent some laborers out there. Here's some things I wrote down. Become a seed sower for God. What does that mean? Be a bread man for God. What does that mean? Well, Jesus said, I'm the bread. And if he is the bread of life, then why don't we distribute the bread? The spiritual bread. Why don't when we see somebody, we give them a scripture to help them. We're giving bread out. Here, here let me give you some bread, brother. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, let me give you some bread, sister. God so loved the world, he forgave his only begotten son. I mean, let me give you some bread. Let's become a seed sower and sow the word and a bread giver that we can give the bread. You know, years ago, they used to have actually bread men. They used to deliver bread to the house. That's physical bread. I'm talking about spiritual bread here. I'm talking about bread that tears down walls. I'm talking about bread that can move mountains. I'm talking about bread that can raise people up. I'm talking about bread that can heal. The healing bread. The healing bread. The bomb of Gilead. I'm talking about something that you can become for God. A bread deliverer for God. Because His love goes on and on. So, I want to become a bread for God. How about this? How about, would, be, would this be kind of awesome? Lord, show me how I can become a greater worshiper. Lord, I want a purpose in my heart to become a better a praiser, a better worshiper for you, God. Show me, Lord, how I can become a worshiper and not just sit back and and wait, watch things happen, and be a spectator in the church of God. But Lord, show me how to be a, a great worshiper. 
Wouldn't that be a purpose in my heart? Become a great worshiper? You could say, you know, I got a purpose in my heart. I want to become the best worshiper around. I want to become the best praise team in my church. I want to, I want to worship God every chance I get. I want to teach others how to worship God. Wouldn't it be awesome if we become worshipers and bread and, and, and bread delivers and worshipers for God? Wouldn't it be awesome that we could have a purpose in our heart and not just sit on the pew and be a pew warmer, but have a purpose to come to church, to give out some bread, yeah. and to give out some worship yeah. and praise? Yes. So how about start looking for your purpose? See, I believe God saved you for purpose. I don't believe God saved you to look better. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you one thing. I believe if you were ugly when you got saved, I can't help you. If, if you were dumb when you got saved, I can't help you. But God can. I'm just saying, praise God. God saved you for a purpose. Start looking for your purpose in your life to serve God. Amen. Don't just become a pew warmer. Become a purpose, purpose, purpose person. That you can have a, a reason. Lord, make me better than I am. Let me become an encourager. Let me become a greater encourager. Let me encourage the poor. Let me encourage the sick. Let me encourage the lost. Oh, Lord, let me have a purpose to encourage people. Wouldn't that be awesome? Well... How about uh, become a courage for the poor, a prayer warrior? Maybe I can encourage other people to become prayer warriors. Maybe by my praying a lot, people say, oh, I wish I could pray like you do. You could say, well, God gave me a purpose one day to become a great prayer warrior. And now I want to share with others and teach them how to become great prayer warriors. And next thing you know, we got a whole house full, a church full of prayer warriors because somebody had a purpose. Amen. Instead of coming and just sitting there on the pew and looking pretty. Amen. I believe you saved to serve. Amen. What about this? What about be a comforter to others? Oh God? Let me be a, a greater comforter for people when they're going through something. Maybe, Lord, you could give me a word or, or let me give some bread out or, or, Lord, maybe you could help me pray for them and help them become comfortable in what they're doing. A comforter. Maybe I can send some cards out. Maybe, Lord, give me a purpose to write somebody. Woo! Wouldn't that be something? Throw it to typewriter and get back to pin out. That was a computer get the pen out. There ain't no typewriter. Yes. Well, what about how many got a phone? What do you use it for? You use it for the purpose of God or you just use it for yourself? Don't raise your hand. I didn't mean that. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you've got a phone, don't you know somebody that you can pick up the phone and say, I heard about your problem, your situation, or what you're going through, and I just want to know, can I pray for you? Or, or maybe just pick up, I, I don't have the courage to call them and, and say, well, can I give you some bread? Oh, I got some bread here. God so loved the world. Oh, I got some bread. There is no other name given unto heaven whereby men must be saved. I got some word. There is no other name given unto heaven whereby men must be saved. I mean, I got some word for you. But, or some bread. But maybe I could just send them a card because I'm not good at talking on the phone. <laughs> I'm not good talking on the phone. So I'll write them a card or send them a card. Maybe God will give you a purpose to have a writing ministry. Because some of you already got a talking ministry, you just won't admit it. <laughs> <laughs> what about this? Have you ever thought about having a ministry to invite people to church? Amen. You know, there's ministries out there that do that. I know some churches have two or three hundred ministries or outreaches. Think about this for a moment. Oh God, give me a heart for the lost. 
Give me a purpose to see the lost saved. And Lord, send somebody across my path that I could invite to church. I could pray with. I could share Jesus with. I could give them some bread or something. I could comfort them. I get their phone number and call them and tell them about Jesus. I mean, think about these. These are some purposes that you should have because God love goes on and on and on, and I don't want to go on and on and on without you. You need to go on and on and on too, because I don't believe none of you're leaving for heaven tomorrow. Anybody, anybody you're leaving tomorrow? If you are, I don't know, because I'll mark you off the list. But if not, <laughs> I expect some bread winners here. I expect right. expect some bread men and women. I expect some comforters, some prayer warriors, and some church inviters. Amen. Or what about this one? What about? Have a heart for God and the church. Amen. Woo! Wow. Have a heart for God. And, wouldn't that be a new one? Praise God. Give me a purpose to love the church more. Give me a purpose to, to see the grass cut. And, yes, and, 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 and give me a heart to see the, the her church clean. And Thank give me a heart, Lord God, to teach Sunday school and to be a prayer warrior and open up for prayer. And, and maybe I can learn to play the the, 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 the so far like Donald or or maybe sing like Brother Mac or, or Brother Troy. I mean, give a purpose. Amen. Are you tired of doing nothing? You should be. Let we're saved for purpose. Let's find our purpose. And let's get it before it's too late. Don't let it be on your epitaph. He didn't do a thing. He sat there on the pew and now he's gone. Wouldn't that be odd? Let's come on there. Boy, he was a soul winner for Jesus. Right. I'm saying get yourself a purpose. And find your click, your niche. Go for it. You could be the greatest soul winner for this church. You could be the greatest and inviter for this church. You could be responsible for millions of people getting saved. We'd have to knock out to the doors or the windows and, and build on bigger or either go down to Brother Mac's place and turn into a church. Amen. yourself share that bread Jesus is the bread of life start taking some bread of life give it because you have no promise and not the worst part is what about those people out there that you meet every day you never open your mouth and all Jesus if you'll be ashamed of me you know what's a new a new twist on that because when you don't tell others about Jesus I'll tell you one thing you had a new baby you had a new grandson or grandchild if you had a new dog if you had a new car if you had a new wife a new husband you're going to tell somebody Amen? Come on. Amen. So why can't you share the bread of life? Let us stand someone here, Father, that's going through hard times, or Lord, just failing, or Lord, whatever, the, maybe need a healing, or maybe need a spiritual healing. Lord, whatever it may be, Father, I want them to, to come today, Father, knowing that I serve a God that's bigger than any problem that they face today. Lord, give us a purpose here today, Father. 
a purpose to love you, a purpose to, to share the gospel, a purpose to worship you more, and to worship become prayer warriors and bread givers. We ask you, Lord, touch these people's lives today. And Lord, if it be someone, anyone, I want to ask them to come right now, that we may believe God together, and they'll never leave this place.